Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on The Flash Season 3. Now, this is going to be my trailer breakdown for Episode 17, otherwise entitled Duet, otherwise known as The Flash Supergirl Musical Crossover. But before we get into anything else, let's actually watch the trailer. Barry! What the hell is going on? You're in a movie musical. How do we get out of here? Just follow the... the yellow brick road? No. What's wrong with you? No, it's the script. Follow the script. Together, the boys were going to war. Reach the end of the plot, you get to go home. Stick to the script. Although I should mention, if you die in here, you die out there. Hi, Miss Being Bulletproof. Um... It's a special musical episode of The Flash, all new Tuesday, 8, 7 central. So yeah, this episode looks a tad different, just a little bit different than your typical episode of The Flash. And that's sort of saying something, seeing just last episode we ventured into the Speed Force and saw The Flash take on the Grim Reaper of Speedsters himself, the Black Flash. But it's obviously a bit different as this is the long-awaited musical crossover episode between both The Flash and Supergirl, with some other guest appearances from characters of other shows as well. This episode was actually announced before the seasons even started, I think they announced it just after Comic-Con, or it might have been actually during Comic-Con, one of the two. Anyway, this story will start towards the end of the Supergirl episode the day before, and then obviously continue on into this episode of The Flash. Before we break down the trailer, we are going to go through the synopsis or description for this episode just because it gives a clearer idea of what's going on. But before we do that, if you do go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below what you're looking forward to most in this episode. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Barry and team are surprised when mon and Hank Henshaw arrive on their Earth carrying a comatose Supergirl who was whammied by the Music Meister. Unable to wake her up, they turn to Team Flash to save her. However, the Music Meister surprises the Flash and puts him in a similar coma, one that Team Flash cannot cure. Kara and Barry wake up without their powers in an alternate reality where life is like a musical and the only way to escape is by following the script, complete with singing and dancing to the end. So the trailer starts off with Kara, or Supergirl, up on this stage with quite the shocked expression on her face. In my opinion, this is when we first enter this re uh, this alternate reality that the Music Master has placed Kara and Barry in, or it is when Barry first encounters Kara in this reality. I say this as straight after this, you do see Kara like run towards Barry as if she is thankful to see him, with Barry then saying, uh, what the hell is going on? It is important to remember that Kara will be put in this reality before Barry is, and by a decent amount of time as well. So she will have to deal with more of the shenanigans of this reality than Barry will, and she may have already performed a couple of songs without us seeing them, if you know what I mean. Behind Barry here, you actually do see a poster for Thurston the Great Magician. This is actually a real person or magician. He was uh, Howard Thurston, who was extremely well known around the turn of the 20th century, so like the 1900s. This is an old poster though, you can see it has like wear and tear, it just looks a bit older. The reason I'm bringing this up is because it can give us a hint as to where this is set. You would have to guess around the 1940s as we also see Tommy guns later on in the trailer. I'm pretty sure they don't actually specify what decade it is in within the trailer. Next up we get our first good look at the Music Master who is the villain for the cross server who is actually played by Darren Chris, who is well known as a former cast member of Glee. Just like Melissa Benoist and Grant Gustin, who both play Kara and Barry, respectively. And here's actually a fun fact, which I only learned earlier today. Darren Chris actually went to university or college with Carlos Valdez, who plays Cisco. So there's connections everywhere within this crossover. Now, Music Meister tells them they are in a movie musical, and to get out, all they have to do is simply, you know, follow the script. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, I guess it matters what is actually within that script. Like, if there's fighting a dragon within a script, it's going to be pretty difficult. Now, I did chuckle when Kara butted in and said, follow the yellow brick road when Music Meister was talking. So does this mean that The Wizard of Oz is a thing on Earth 38 as well? It seems like it. Next up in the trailer, we get our first look at some side characters for this reality as we see Joe West, Martin Stein, and Malcolm Merlin. Obviously, Martin Stein and Malcolm Merlin are on Legends of Tomorrow at this current time. Joe and Stein will be gangsters in one gang, while Merlin will be in another, and they will have some standoffs, if you want to call them that. You do actually see uh, Malcolm and some goons shooting up a storm later in the trailer as well. We do get a quick shot of what will most likely be one of the musical numbers between Barry and Kara within this episode. I think they have two. I might be wrong, but I know there's two 
songs that were written for Barry and Cara to sing, but there might be more, but we know there's two. And this is actually followed by another quick shot of another musical number. You can't really see this too well, but Music Meister is on stage singing. So this may be his like introduction number for the episode. So Barry and Cara like might walk out, there's music and stuff going on, and it's Music Meister singing a song, introducing himself and maybe telling them what to do, something along those lines. As I mentioned before, Malcolm and his goons start shooting up at Stein and Joe, but you do see Barry here run out in between the gunfire. Possibly this isn't meant to happen in the script, like they're not meant to fight, so Barry's like panicking, going, oh no, this cannot happen, otherwise me and Kara cannot get out of this situation. It is important to remember though that Kara and Barry don't have their powers in this reality, they are just normal. So Barry just can't speed around catching bullets and Supergirl can't just stand in front of them because she's not bulletproof, like she even mentions that in the trailer. And as Music Meister goes on to say in the trailer, if you die in here, you die out there. So Barry has some balls stepping out into that gunfight. He must have a pretty damn good reason to do so though. You do also quickly see Wynn playing piano. If you don't watch Supergirl, Wynn is like the Cisco or Felicity of Supergirl. I guess that's the best way to put it. Like he's not exactly like the characters, but if you're going to compare characters from different shows to other shows, that's the best way to describe Wynn, I think. He isn't actually traveling over to Earth-1, as the synopsis says, it's mon and Hank Henshaw, so that's the reason he is in the alternate reality. And also, the guy that plays Wynn, who I think is Jeremy Jordan, I think that's the actor's name, he's like big on Broadway, like he's a, mainly a Broadway actor, so it would be sort of wasted not to put him in a musical episode. We might also see Alex Danvers pop up, I know the actress is a decent singer, but it's hard to tell if that will actually happen, because there's been no word of her actually appearing in it. She might appear for a quick bit, uh, like a quick bit but uh, yeah, nothing confirmed about her actually like, singing or properly appearing in this episode. One last thing to mention about the trailer, I think it's great what they did with like the logo and stuff, having it on like a theatre sign, as well as all the wording beforehand being on those theatre signs. They did something like that last season in the King Shark episode trailer, I think it was. Like they made the lettering and the logo fit into the style of like the movie Jaws. It was really cool. So they do fun things like this with the Flash every now and then. Now one thing that is not highlighted in the trailer and really not highlighted in the synopsis either is what's happening outside of this musical reality while all this other stuff is going on. So we are going to get like, it's probably going to be like 75% of the episode is in this alternate reality where everything's like a musical, but there is going to be some other stuff happening outside of it because Music Master can exist in both realities. That's what they really haven't established in this trailer. So he's going to exist in this alternate reality sort of messing with Kara and Barry but then he's also going to be out in the normal reality trying to do his own dastardly things, if you want to call it that. So the other heroes of like Kid Flash, Viable Cisco, and Martian Manhunter are going to have to go after him. Maybe mon but there might be something weird with mon where maybe his powers don't work on this Earth, I don't know. Or maybe he just wants to stay at Star Labs and be there in case Kara wakes up, who knows. But yeah, that's also going to be in the episode, so be on the lookout for that. It's not all musical related, but for the most part, it will be all in this musical alternate reality. Now, I know a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of this prospect. When it was first announced, I was like, oh, okay, I didn't hate the idea. I was like, oh, okay, I don't mind the idea. It hopefully, it just works out well in relation to the season. Like, is it going to make sense? And when you think about it, the way that they've set it up, there's really no avoiding it if it was going to happen because Music Master has come and put Flash in a coma. So it's not like he could quickly solve it because Savitar's the main uh, threat. He's been put in this coma, there's nothing really that he can do, and they sort of need Barry to defeat Savitar, if you know what I mean, so it can all work around this, uh, like, idea. So I think it fits in well. If it was like an episode or two later, I think it'd be cutting it too close to the season finales, but I think this is a decent episode to put it in. Like, either put it here, or put it like an episode 11 or 12, somewhere around there. Like, I think they've put it in a decent place uh, for, it, for it to actually work well, so I'm okay with it. And if you're one of the people that is like, I'm not going to watch it, fair enough, you don't have to watch it. It's not like people are strapping you to a chair and you have to watch it. But, you know, give it a go. You might like it. You don't know if you're going to hate it until you've actually watched it. Have you actually watched a musical before? Like This might not be like a normal musical. This could be like a completely different thing which gets you into it. And uh, yeah, you might actually like it. So give it a go. If you really, really are against it, fair enough, you don't have to watch it. But if you're sort of on the fence... Honestly, I would give it a go because you might actually find it a lot of fun and just sort of different. Something, that, something you don't see too often with shows like The Flash, Supergirl, Arrow, Legends, all of that stuff. It just 
It's just something different and it could be a lot of fun. But thanks for watching guys. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it. Let me know in the comments section down below what you're looking forward to most in this episode. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later guys. Goodbye.